This is a Fox Sports presentation. Week number 16 in the NFL. It's December, so you better bring your A game, or else you might end up full of shame. It's the NFL on Fox. Today in Pittsburgh, PA, the Warriors from the West wage war. Suddenly, Seymour, the Niners live in first place no more. While Steve's a stickler for winning, Jerry says, just get me the ball, I'll end this free fall. But Pittsburgh's D is cast from solid steel. And if you need some facts, go check out who leads the AFC in sacks. The joint in Jersey will be jumping as the New Orleans Aints try to once again be the heavenly Saints. While Rodney's rocking and rolling to another grand, Dan's determined to make a final stand. The Rams and Falcons have more than Georgia on their minds. You know, top draft picks, new jobs. Christmas shopping, where was I hope? Isaac Bruce, always getting his yard work done. And with 37 yards to go, Jamal will join the 1,000-yard show. Tony D takes his bucks back to his former home in the Dome. Lately, Tampa Bay's D has been playing in the right key. But watch out for Brad. This QB can set his team free. The Redskins ride into the desert storm looking to right their RFK loss to those cardiac kids. Today, Norv turns to touchdown Terry to run up the score. And even with Boomer really sore, Arizona's playing with playoff prime. And now they have Mr. Graham back on their side. Today, Green Bay rolls into the Motor City. The big pack attack is back with Brett running and gunning for a first round bomb with that Freeman who loves to fly. But Detroit is ready to go with the Barry Sanders Show. Hey, now. Live from the Fox Television Center in Hollywood, four guys who are always ready to play. It's the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. Week number 16 in the NFL, and for many of the 14 teams still hot in the playoff hunt, the entire season rests on today's action. Highlighting the day on Fox, the 49ers and Steelers clash at Three Rivers Stadium. And if you don't get an early game, you'll see the Washington Redskins taking on the Arizona Cardinals in Tempe. And hello again, everyone. I'm James Brown welcoming you to Fox NFL Sunday. A pleasure once again to be along with my compadres, Ronnie Lott, Howie Long, Terry Bradshaw. Ronnie, you're chomping at the bit to say something. What's going on? Well, my mom said, Ronnie, will you get that frown off your face? Frown? Yeah. And I, and I said, what frown? She goes, that, that frown, that, I don't, I said, mom, the frown? She goes, yeah, the frown you gave Terry Bradshaw. I said, what are you talking about? Yeah. She, was, she must really yeah, be upset with me. You listen to your me. mama. You oh, understand? Hey, you know something? You know, she knows that we already have a problem with the guy anyway. But <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's only your first year here, big guy. Don't the only mama. Me. That's the only hey, mama. Hey, mama Marianne, won't do it. I want to say hello to James Brown's mom, Marianne, out there. Back home from the hospital. Been gone two weeks. We love you. We're glad you're doing well, babe. Enjoy the show. This show's for you. All right, All my right. goodness. Our number one fan back at home watching. All right, folks, here's a look at what's happening around the NFL. Now, contrary to reports last week, it looks like the Seahawks will not be headed to Cleveland. With baseball's Mariners up for sale and Seattle's baseball stadium funds sidetracked, the Seattle Stadium Task Force voted 17 to 3 this weekend to demolish the Kingdome and build an open air football stadium. Now, Seattle's City Council is expected to approve this proposal at a meeting today, and Governor elect Gary Locke apparently has changed his mind and supports the football project. Paul Allen, the prospective new owner of the Seahawks, may contribute $100 million to the new that put venture. Put me back a little bit. Oh, yeah. just a bit. Yeah. A small debt, no question. All <laughs> small. All right, at this time of the year, there's not only a hectic schedule with respect to the final shopping days, but a similar frenzy over the playoff spots as well. Now, to ease some of the confusion, let's take a look at how the playoff picture is shaping up. In the NFC, the division leaders are Green Bay, Carolina, and Dallas. The Packers have clinched and can earn a bye with a victory today. Now, should Green Bay win and Carolina lose, Green Bay gets the home field advantage throughout. The Panthers get a first round bye with the win and losses by the Niners and Cowboys. Also, a Cowboys victory means they're in the playoffs. In the wild card race, San Francisco has a spot. Meanwhile, Minnesota and Philadelphia control their own destinies. In fact, if the Vikings win today and the Redskins lose, Washington is eliminated and the Eagles and Vikings move on to the postseason. 
AFC, Denver, New England, Pittsburgh, all playoff bound, and the Broncos have home field throughout. Now, the Steelers have won the Central title, while the Patriots can win the East with a win today or a Buffalo loss tomorrow night. AFC wild card, hey, a log jam over there. Ten teams still capable of winning a playoff spot. Front runners, Kansas City, Buffalo, and Indy. And should the Chiefs or Bills win this weekend, they're in the playoffs. That is the picture now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it says it all, right? All right, folks. It. Time now for our Fox Watch, and we begin things in Detroit, where the Lions host the Green Bay Packers. Now, it is the 133rd time they've met, but each game renews the bitter rivalry between these two NFC Central squads. Tom Brenneman will be handling the calls in this game, and he joins us now. Good afternoon, Tom. JB, thank you very much. The Green Bay Packers continue their pursuit for a home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs. Now, Ronnie, a lot of people think they already have it. That's not the case. Yeah, imagine this scenario, Tom. If the Carolina Panthers win the last two games, the Green Bay Packers win here today against Detroit, but lose next week against Minnesota, both teams would be tied. They'd have to go to the NFL tiebreaker system. Because they're tied, the top three items would automatically cancel out. They'd go to common opponents. But remember, Green Bay has that lost to Minnesota, so they would both be tied again at 5-2 and two if that one would cancel out. That would mean they'd have to go to the big one, NFC point differential. The problem for Green Bay, the Panthers are up by 10. The Panthers have no more NFC games to play. So Green Bay has to start thinking about points. And wouldn't it be ironic, Tom, this field goal here, Chris Boniel down in Dallas, it didn't mean much, but it's three points. That could be the difference between home field or no home field. We'll keep a beat on that all day today. Right now, let's go to Pat Summerall in Pittsburgh. Here at Three Rivers Stadium, the 49ers and Steelers both 10 and 4, an unseasonably perfect day in Pittsburgh. The weather won't be a factor, but the health situation will be a factor. Steelers concerned about their fullback, tailback, Tom uh, Jerome Bettis. He came out at 10 o'clock this morning, worked on a sprained ankle. He's wearing a brace, but the word we get is he should be able to play will not start Eric Pegram will start in his place and that's not too bad because Pegram gained more yards than anybody ever has against San Francisco when he was with Atlanta Darren Perry will start today at free safety he was involved in an incident on Friday night where he was picked up for DWI and leaving the scene of an accident he however he will not be arraigned on next Friday and he will start today the 49ers a little thin at tight end otherwise healthy. Brent Jones has a twinge in his hamstring, but he should be able to play. So that's the health situation and the weather situation at Three Rivers. Now let's send you to Joe Buck. All right, Pat, thank you very much. Well, here in the Twin Cities last night, 8 to 10 inches of snow fell, but that's okay because we're in a dome. That's good news for the Vikings because under Denny Green's tenure as head coach, this team is 7-2 and two at home during the month of December. And right now, their playoff destiny is right in their own hands. A win today against Tampa Bay and a loss by Washington at Arizona, and they are in. How ironic. They tried to do it today against Tony Dungy's Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was their defensive coordinator just a year ago. His defense has improved more than any other defense around the National Football League. And remember this. This matchup was good enough for the Buccaneers. They beat the Minnesota Vikings earlier on in the season. That's it from the Twin Cities. Let's send you down to Atlanta and Kevin Harlan. Kevin. All right, Joe, the NFC West on display is the Rams at 4 and 10. Take on the Falcons at 3 and 11. Motivation easy for Atlanta because back in early November, they went to the Dome in St. Louis and were thrashed by the St. Louis Rams 59 to 16. So all this week, Atlanta coach June Jones ran a film of that game for his players as a subtle reminder. So the Rams know they've got their hands full today, and today they return running back Lawrence Phillips, who's back in the starting lineup after a knee injury. But the bigger story, the two embattled coaches, both on the hot seat as speculation mounts over their respective futures. Right now to the Meadowlands and Dick Stockton. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. The Saints and Giants are out of playoff contention. The big story here, as you know, the Eagles and the Jets played yesterday afternoon. They share the stadium, so they have to transform it from a Jets field to a Giants field. And that happened after the game. And they did a terrific job. And our hats off to the crew for a job well done. Right now, let's go back to JB. 
Help everywhere, huh? Well, the Redskins are hoping to have some help today as they take on the Arizona Cardinals in Tempe. For those of you not getting an early game, that's the game you'll see coming your way at 4 Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific. Now, before we talk football, I know you got a comment about your guy, Matt Miller. My buff, he's got three annuities coming in from the five teams he played for. He's doing radio. He did a game yesterday. He's doing a game today. How much money does the guy need? <laughs> the Redskins, you know.